I recently acquired for my postal history collection slash Michigan history collection uh, an item that is very significant. I want to tell you about the cover that I, it's a postal cover and the significant history behind it. First the cover. This is known as a stampless cover. Back before the United States issued postage stamps when a letter was sent it would be stamped uh, for the proper amount, cancelled and then sent on. The individual who received the letter had to pay the postage rather than the sender. This then was a stampless cover. This one does not have an amount but rather the initials uh, look like DO to me. The postmark in red is Detroit, Michigan, December 17th and it's dated on the back 1839. At that time, Detroit was Michigan's capital. Michigan as a state was only two years old as it was admitted to the Union on January 26, 1837, but not uh, without some problems first. Congress would not allow its admission until a border dispute known as the Toledo War was settled. Stevens T. Mason, Michigan's governor, accepted uh, Michigan acquiring the western part of the Upper Peninsula, and Ohio got the disp disputed uh, Toledo Strip. In 1839, Detroit was home to only 9,102 residents, and that does not include the uh, nearby Native American population. I live in Saginaw, Michigan, about 102 miles north of Detroit, and while I, have, uh, while I don't have the exact figure, there were less than 200 people living here in 1839. So that sort of sets the background of the time frame in which this cover was sent. It was sent by Governor Stevens T. Mason and is signed by him on the reverse as Governor Mason. It was sent to Henry Guernsey Hubbard at Middletown, Connecticut. Let me first tell you about uh, Henry G. Hubbard. He was the first son of a noted Michigan geologist, explorer, and surveyor, Bella Hubbard, who was born in Detroit, uh, Hubbard Lake up in uh, northeast Michigan's upper Penins or lower peninsula, was named after Bella Hubbard. Now Henry himself was a noted hort horticulturalist, botanist, and, et and <laughs> sorry, entomologist. Henry Hubbard was uh, trained at Harvard University and worked closely with Herman August Hagen, Carl Robert Austin Sakin, and especially Eugene Amadeus Schwartz, with whom he collected around the Lake Superior District. In 1877, he studied and collected termites in Jamaica, and after that he joined the Geological Survey of Kentucky in 1879, working on the uh, fauna of the caves. Between 1880 and 1839, he worked on horticultural insect pests in Florida, particularly those of the orange tree. And after collecting trips to Michigan, Montana, Utah, and Oregon, he accompanied Charles Valentine Riley on a collecting trip to the West Indies. In 1877, he designed and built San Shui in Crescent City, Florida. But now let's move on to a Governor Stevens T. Mason. As I uh, stated, he was Michigan's first governor, but prior to that, at only 19, when he wasn't old enough to even vote, he was appointed Secretary of the Michigan Territory. In 1812, <clears throat> Mason's father, uh, John Thompson Mason, uh, left his family stronghold in Virginia in an attempt to make his own fortune in Lexington, Kentucky. In 1817, President James Monroe appointed the elder Man, uh, Mason as uh, United States Marshal. His business ventures were a complete failure, and the family became nearly broke in the 1820s, but he was a, a lawyer and land agent from a very influential family. John Mason was appointed Secretary of Michigan Territory and Superintendent of India, Indian Affairs in 1830 by President Andrew Jackson. Young Stephen, uh, Stevens was more politically savvy than, than his father and helped to protect him from schemes launched by anti-Jackson forces. This gained him notice from the territorial governor, Louis Cass, in 1831, and President Jackson sent his father on a mission to Mexico and named Stevens to replace his father as secretary at age 19. About the same time, Governor Cass became Jackson's secretary of war. George Bryan Porter was named to replace Cass, but he was frequently absent, and for all uh, practical purposes, Stevens was the acting governor during this time, which led to his nickname, the Boy Governor. Stevens Mason was very instrumental in petitioning for Michigan statehood, 
The first petition was in 1832, but Michigan was not admitted to the Union until 1837, when the Toledo Land War was finally settled. Not wanting to alienate support from Ohio, President Jackson removed uh, Masons uh, from office in 1835 and appointed John S. Little Jake Horner as his replacement. However, Mason was still popular in Michigan, and voters approved a constitution on October 5, 1835, and Stevens T. Mason was elected first governor. Mason's term as governor was ambitious, but troubled by outside circumstances. His program included the development of three railroads and two canals. He was re-elected in 1837, but Michigan's economy soon began to suffer due to the Great Panic of 1837. Earlier in 1837, Mason had negotiated to fund uh, the state improvements program <clears throat> by the sale of $5 billion in bonds. This arrangement fell apart in 1837 following the bankruptcies by both of the companies uh, building the canals and the bank that was backing the canals. The state was left with over $5 million, or $2 million, excuse me, $2 million in bad debts. At this point, it seems as if Stevens had had enough, and rather than running in a contentious campaign and in, uh, an embarrassing defeat in the 1839 elections, he moved to New York with his wife, where he attempted to open a private law office. His successor as governor was an old political rival, William Woodbridge, who placed total blame for all of Michigan's financial woes directly on Mason. His career started early, but it ended uh, ended early, as did his life. He caught pneumonia in the winter of 1842 and died on the night of January 4th, 1843. And that is a brief account of the history behind this postal cover and, uh, and uh, that, that it represents. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. It is amazing the history behind postage stamps and postal covers. Be sure to give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on a single new program here on the Dennis Morrison channel. Again, thanks for stopping by. God bless, and have a great night.